What do you need to do, Thomas? Uh, as soon as you guys are three minutes away, I'll do my final wire and we'll go hunt. Okay. You hot? You need to do no, anything? No, I'm not hot yet. Okay, wait. I want to see where the camera so everybody knows the time. We'll get all that shit back once we wire him and we know where it's got to be. Then we'll be okay. Uh, we need to be okay, the battery off. So I'm done now. Did you see anything noteworthy in that clip? Just muzzle, muzzle discipline. Uh, you said muzzle discipline? And and also a so weapon. Get a little closer to that microphone, would you? My apologies, I'm sorry. Uh, muzzle discipline, but more importantly, there was a weapon exchange that occurred with, uh, I didn't see a safety check between those weapons. Um, not sure if it was a replica that she was handing off or a live firearm. You had concerns about that. Assuming that it was two live weapons being exchanged, I'm not exactly sure why that would have occurred. Then there should have been a safety check between those two. If uh, she was, if he had a replica, then that would have been a good thing that he had a replica previously. But then if she handed him off a live gun at that point in time, there should have been a safety check. But more likely in this particular circumstance, he's wired at the back and he's about to do a stunt where they're gonna probably do a dead man's a snatch. They're gonna snatch him into that wall uh, probably when he's been uh, fired upon or whatnot. Uh, having said that, they probably took the live weapon and handed him a replica, a soft replica, so he wouldn't get hurt when he lands on the ground, uh, metal object in his hand and whatnot. So they probably, that probably was an exchange for a soft rubber replica gun. Okay. And, and it's a su assumption, I'm not sure. And do you have a comment on um, uh, Ms. Gutierrez's uh, handling of that shotgun that she's carrying? She's still carrying it by the muzzle end. <clears throat> That looks like a different shotgun, actually, than the previous one. Okay. States Exhibit 158. So let's wait before we hook him up. So, yeah, otherwise he can so catch us. No, you know, I'm not sure if you want to get blood on the ring. I don't know how these are. No worries. Okay. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, uh, Thomas, how much blood do you think is going to come out? But the lens is right here. It'll, so, it'll get on you from there. It'll get on the lens here. Yeah. See, I was thinking ahead. All right, so we can remember you put it in a nostril flat and back camera. Wait, where's the book? Where's the book? Hey, Dave. Do you want to eat? Yeah, you think anything worrisome in that video? Assuming Miss Gutierrez is behind camera, then they would be prepping for that scene and everything would have been in place. So, no, assuming she's there. Okay. Um, let's tr uh, and let me let me ask you this. In addition to seeing videos from the production outfitters behind the scenes uh, collection, have you also seen some of the actual movie takes that were filmed uh, during the twelve days of filming for Rust? Yes. I'm going to play for you uh, States Exhibit Fifty Nine, uh, which is going to be from that collection. There, uh, there was one additional. Uh, hey, Mark, stop. Hey. One fifty-nine. I apologize. No, there was one additional uh, video in that exhibit. Are we continuing on with the uh, behind the scenes now? No, I'm gonna. I was gonna move us to. Um, I was gonna move us to the rest oh, okay. productions videos. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Well, just a minute. So did, did you publish one fifty-eight? I guess is the question. Is that what the question is? Yes, I published 158. Now we're moving on to 159. Um, and I, I, Mr. Carpenter, I think I understand your question. Let's go ahead and move on to these. Copy that. Okay. <clears throat> Mark. Set, set, 
One more, one more, one more. I forgot to recoil stuff. No, no, right away, right away. Let's reload. Here we go. So, Helena. Hi. Okay. Here we go. Come on. Well, I had to go closer to Danny did, so. You want to? Okay, copy. We should add two guns and both were reloading. And hang on just a second. I, th I think at the beginning, for some reason, it, what I want to show you is out of this frame. Bear with me. Mr. Bow, how can I do frame by frame? Let me see if I can get to what I wanted to visit with you about. And for the record, I'm just fast forwarding frame by frame. Sorry, that takes a long time, I apologize. Let me ask you this. Mr. Lewis, do you see the issue? I do. Okay. I, I, I think I... You're going to help me fix that? I am. Okay. Um, but for the purposes of this, j just so that we can move on, um, have you seen this video where the frame is a little bit bigger and cool. you, you, you can see someone over on the far right side of the frame? And I can't play it on that. I know. I know. Okay. Um, we'll we'll swap it out. We'll, we'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you uh, the the one that has the wider frame. I apologize for that error, um, <clears throat> but we'll go ahead and go through your testimony now. So the the other wider frame of this video. What do you see over on the right hand side? Well, you have uh, two cameras operating in that particular scene. If it's the one I'm thinking of, you've got an A cam and a B cam, meaning they're filming it from two different locations. So you're actually seeing from one of the camera angles that has an entire operating crew behind it, which will have a first aid. So they'll have a camera operator, et cetera, behind that camera. So imagine a crew of people, a few people behind that camera. And then you've got the other camera that you're actually seeing in frame being filmed. And a lot of times in an action sequence, they'll film it from two different angles so you can cut and chop it up in editorial. So that's what you're going to be seeing if it's the video that I'm remembering correctly. Okay. And, and I'll, the, the gentleman here will pull it and we'll, okay. we'll play it. Um, generally speaking, and, and we're going to play the other video. Well, you know what? Let's, let's move okay. to the, I, I think this is, I don't recall if this is Cam A or Cam B. Oh, okay. They're keeping me straight here. Let's see. Hey, Mark. There you go, Mark. Set, set, ready, and action. What's happening there? Do you see this? This over on the right here. Um, so keep in mind, as I said previously, you will see a camera crew operating, and he's doing what's called a handheld right there. He's 
hand holding the camera and moving it, meaning it's not on a dolly or a track or anything of that nature. So that camera operator's hand holding that uh, piece of equipment with operators behind him. Remember that the frame that you're seeing here has that exact same situation going on as well behind this. So it's a number of people out here, both behind that camera and behind the one that we're seeing POV from, okay? And uh, that appears to be a full flash blank just from the report, the amount of powder that's leaving the barrel, the amount of uh, report and uh, gun smoke that's coming out. I would imagine that's a full flash blank. And one of the first rounds that he fired actually um, uh, incapacitated the camera and operator in the smoke, meaning he was entirely too close to that camera to fire that. We have a minimum amount of distance that is required for safety when you're firing blanks, depending on what type of blank you're firing, and uh, that was well within the safety zone. And, and let's, let's say you're wrong. Let's say that wasn't a full load blank. Let's say it was a half load or a quarter load. How, how does that... Well, let, let, let me stop for just a second, and let me ask you this. Can, can you explain to the jury, um, talk to them a little bit about blank rounds and whether or not blank rounds can be dangerous? Sure. So um, a few years back, uh, the local 600, which is a camera union, uh, and the gentleman that uh, works in that union, he's one of their business reps, asked me to do a soft tissue uh, video series uh, showing the effects of soft tissue from blanks. Um, a tomato is a very good example of uh, the human skin uh, from a very non-scientific standpoint, right? But the internal part of a tomato and the external being the skin tissue is a very good example. So we took a tomato and at different distances fired quarter flash, half flash, full flash blanks at that tomato in high speed cameras to show the effects of it. Um, you also get down to blanks that get into 1.8, 1.6, 2.3, but that's really, really small things that just make the firearm operate if it's a semi or fully automatic and not something that we would be dealing with here. So getting back to your point directly, we did that video series and a full flash blank from the distance of uh, easily six feet uh, to eight feet can peel the skin off and do damage trauma to the inside of it. Um, half flash blank at four to six feet, so forth and so on. Again, not an exact uh, distance ratio to here today in court, but with well within any distance that's being fired there would have uh, done damage to human tissue if it would hit it. And you can almost assuredly say that was a full flash blank from the distance of the report. You can see the smoke travel from the muzzle, which is the area of the firearm where a projectile technically would come out, from the muzzle end of that weapon to the end of that initial smoke stream, which if you had a high speed enough camera, you would see fire in there as well. It's gunpowder burning inside of that smoke. Uh, you can see that it's all the way to the camera, which is approximately, I would say that's about eight feet, seven to eight feet. The, um, um is there any, when, when a blank is fired, uh, is it possible that something is expelled from the firearm? There is things expelled from the firearm. Now, movie blanks are a bit different than, say, a military blank, uh, because they're meant to be shot in closer proximities, et cetera, et cetera. And you want the, all the particulates inside of the casing, i.e. the gunpowder, anything inside of there, to completely and totally burn up, almost like uh, magic powder. You've seen the magicians throw the thing and all that paper burns up instantaneously. Something to the effect of that. You would want it all to burn up as quickly as possible the minute it is ignited and leaves the muzzle of that weapon. Okay, so there is a little bit of difference. However, it still sends unburnt powder and particulates out of that muzzle, which can put an eye out, burn the skin, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Not to mention the concussive force of it alone. Okay, so I'm going to get to that frame right there. Um, specifically that frame, what's concerning? Well, he's... Uh, within, uh, outside of the bounds of safe distance. In other words, he's well within the no-go zone there, and he's pointing and firing the weapon directly at camera. Now, no matter, now there are particular scenes which are set up in a very specific and controlled manner that you can, you know, point at or near camera, but for the most part, you always instruct any of your performers to always aim off camera. Never aim directly at somebody, aim directly off of them. Even if it's four or five inches or a foot or two, right? Now I'm 
just speaking with an empty weapon that's already been cleared, not to mention a blank, where this is not even what we're talking about now. When you just generally aim a weapon, cheat it to the side a little bit. But in this particular case, we're firing a blank, you would want to have four feet off camera angle that he should be shooting to the side. And keep in mind, no camera crew behind there as well. That entire right hand side or right camera of where he's shooting should be completely clear of any personnel and he should be shooting at least four feet off to the right of that camera and he should be at least 21 feet away. One more, one more, one more. I forgot the recoil stuff. No, no, right away, right away. Let's reload. Here we go. So, Helena. Hi. How many movie sets do you think you've worked on in your career? A hundred. Um, that conduct that we're seeing on the part of Mr. Baldwin, is that typical uh, conduct from an actor on a movie set? No. Why not? Well, number one, uh, he's basically instructing the armor how to do their job at that point, uh, telling them that we should have had the gun a second reload, you know, hurry up, give it to me fast, fast, fast. This is that moment. This is that moment I spoke about earlier. This is that moment that you need to stop and say, no, I'm not going to hurry up, I'm going to slow down. And we don't need to be, you know, passing off weapons this fast or loading guns this fast. This is creating an unsafe and nerve nerve racking situation to lack to to describe it in more layman's terms um always on any kind of live training exercise military training or whatnot you don't want to put people in a nervous position that creates now you can stress this a level of stress stress that's necessary in realism training for military and law enforcement this is not that this should be separate and apart from that and even when that's being done under those circumstances it's done in a controlled manner but rushing with firearms and telling someone to rush with firearms is not, not normal nor accepted. Okay. And, and for the purposes of a couple of follow-up questions, I want you to assume that that gentleman there in the black with blonde hair is the first assistant director. Here we go. Come on. Well, I had to go closer to Danny did, so you want we should have had two guns and both were reloading. You know. Okay. Did you see him just walk away? Mm, I did. Um, what's your opinion on that? Mm, uh, I don't really know what he was doing in that particular moment. Um, I saw Miss Gutierrez attempting to reload that weapon as fast as she could. Of course, assuming it's blanks and we're using the same weapon she was doing it, it looked like the prop master may have been holding the uh, lever action over her shoulder. Not really sure what Mr. Halls is doing. Okay. Uh, is Mr. Halls the person who's responsible for doing the weapons check with Ms. Gutierrez? Uh, it, he would be if you were doing it in that particular scene, just reloading blanks to it. It would be a quick you know, check with the armor and with the actors. They're loading it to make sure and ensure their blanks are being loaded. But many times in a situation like that where you're being rushed to that extent, that's when safety starts falling by the wayside. And could you see, and, and I can replay the last few seconds of it, where Ms. Gutierrez was uh, getting her dummy rounds? Uh, you, you could replay it. I didn't Let's see. Let me back up a little more. I forgot the recoil stuff. No, no, right away, right away. Let's reload. Here we go. So, Helena. Hi. Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. Okay. Here we go. Come on. Well, I had to go closer to Danny did, so. We should have had two guns and both were reloading. Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you see in the video where she's getting her rounds from? It looks like she was getting the blank rounds, assuming they're about to fire again from her fanny pack. And would that be advisable? Uh, I prefer to operate out of a, of a secured box for my blanks that have been pre-checked prior to. Um, again, that may be her protocol, you know, operating off. But in my experience, uh, having multiple things in one area together that are not uh, sequestered apart from one another uh, just leans for potential trouble downstream. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to States Exhibit 159. So 159 is the... 
other camera angle of 160 where we can see 160 is where we can see the camera mount on the side. Mm -hmm. let, let, let's do um, 159 again now that it has a little more context. Set, set, ready, and action. Could you, in that moment, see the smoke go directly at the camera? I could. Frame by frame, please. So that shot, when he fires the gun that time, did we see that initial shot from the other camera? It appears to be maybe the first one or the second one. I think the second one was the more concerning. Okay. I'm not sure where that started from. What are we looking at here? Well, the camera, front, the camera uh, lens has got smoke obscuring it. Um, it. Cameras can be, you know, relatively tricky when you're viewing it from the angle of the camera and after that. But the uh, the better angle on that was the first angle when, okay. uh, from the first one. But again, uh, it's difficult to see. You see smoke over the lens. Having seen the other video, um, is it your opinion that that the smoke that we are seeing right here uh, is is from the gun being fired at the camera? Correct. I mean, the other the other camera told the story of what occurred there. You know, the more correctly. Okay. Big Mark. Yeah, yeah. All right. States Exhibit One Sixty One. No, just... Yeah? Just, when you just, drop your arm, that means he's 10 feet away. Okay. I can't okay. see how close he is, but I want to be almost up by the time he gets here. No, I'm going to go into this. Yeah. Well, let me show you something. Hold on. Step back to your original mark. So one 1,000, two 1,000, three one, I'm getting up. Right. Uh -huh. Then when he drops his arm, Helena, get out of He drops his arm. That means Brady's close. I'm going to start to really get up. Okay. Do you see anything concerning here? He's uh, doing what we saw previously in one of the other videos with the stunt performer. He's using the weapon as a pointing stick, as it's, it's his finger. Um, and you've seen this video before. I have. And what is your understanding about what that gun's loaded with? Uh, it's loaded with probably full flash blanks, but blanks. Uh, okay. Um, what When Mr. Baldwin behaves this way and is using the revolver as a, as a pointer, <coughs> What is the responsibility on the part of Ms. Gutierrez? To intercede uh, and correct uh, un any unsafe behavior. Now, obviously, uh, again, we're talking about the nuances of doing it. I would start off pulling him aside or talking to him uh, individually and say, you know, if we could, let's be careful with that muzzle. Remember muzzle discipline. I even have a little thing that I talk to when I hand a, a weapon off to an actor, and it's what I used to say back in the back in the day. I would say control, and the actors would have to repeat the word control to me. And by repetitively doing that, it becomes a mental training technique to teach them that they are now fully in control of that weapon and their actions while they have it is 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 uh, on them. They are part of that other side of that coin we talked about. If moving past that, I uh, was not getting any result on that, I would have to intercede on in this on camera moment or in rehearsal moment. And then from there, it just depends on whether or not they want to be safe on scene or they want to find somebody else. Okay. All right, we will go ahead and play um, from 23 seconds. Here we go, let's try it. Roll and roll. Like in the path of the gun, could you please move? Did you hear that? I did. Um, tell us what's going on there. It sounded like Miss Gutierrez attempting to correct the fact that she knew that Baldwin, Mr. Baldwin, was pointing that weapon in an unsafe manner, and she was tr attempting to move the crew out of the path of where he was pointing it, and knowing that it was loaded with blanks. Is there a problem with attempting to move the crew? 
Uh, that's uh, the one of the two things that should be occurring. You identify the problem that created the fact that the crew was in an unsafe position, and then you clear out the crew. And she was attempting to, uh, I would assume, uh, not correct Mr. Baldwin, but try to make the crew in a, in a more safe position. Okay. Did you hear that? Check quarter loads. Mm -hmm. Is that what she said? And do you know whether or not it was actually a quarter load? I, I do not know. Okay. Um, in terms of the timing of Ms. Gutierrez telling, and why don't you give the ladies and gentlemen of the jury an idea of how many people are behind this camera? So in a particular scene like this, assume they're shooting it with one camera, camera A, okay? Then you're gonna have your sound, you're gonna have your sound mixer, you're gonna have your camera, your DP, director of photography, you're gonna have your first AC, generally a focus puller, first assistant camera, you'll have a second assistant camera. Uh, more than likely wardrobe is gonna be on set as well, hair and makeup as well. Um, uh, you could have even uh, PAs on set standing there. Um, so you're looking at anywhere in a scene like this between, you know, six and eleven people out there. Um, is there? Well, is props, it advisable? Uh, I'm sorry, props. <clears throat> of course, I left props out. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it advisable for Ms. Gutierrez to wait until the last minute to tell the crew to get out of the way? No, the, the, the direction of firing should have been established prior to the scene. Uh, which way is Mr. Baldwin going to point that weapon? Which way is Mr. Baldwin going to discharge that weapon? Where he's going to walk and in what angle is he going to walk? His starting point, his ending point, and you take all of those things into consideration along with the type of load he's firing, and then you move your crew out appropriately. Second, like if I'm going to shoot right, do you want to go on the other side of the camera? I don't want to shoot toward you. Okay, right here. Okay, I want to shoot close to you. Here we go. Set. Here we go. Ah. Ready. And action. Ah. 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 Go! <laughs> idea is it important um, when we hear when you're on a movie set and you hear the word cut it, is it important that the actors not continue to fire the guns yes and then when you say cut everything stops and it's not just from a creative standpoint it's also from a safety standpoint keep in mind you're dealing with stunts special effects explosives etc etc so when the word cut is said everything should cease immediately so in this instance where Mr. Baldwin was firing the gun after the word cut, is there anything that you would have done? Uh, I, I would file that under the category of going, as the old saying goes, off script. He went off script there and fired for whatever reason that I guess he felt he needed to, but I would have probably said something to him about that as well. Afterwards? Afterwards. Okay. I would have asked him why he did it. and then. And I would have probably phrased it in a way that it was like, is something wrong with the firearm? Did you have it cocked? Was your finger still on the trigger? Why did that extra round go off at the end? Yeah. Um, now, obviously, Ms. Gutierrez is not as experienced as you are. Um, does her lack of experience, in your opinion, change the amount of responsibility she has as the armorer on the movie set. Once you take, I would like to expound on that sure, a little bit. Sure, move your mind. microphone a little closer if you can, if it will move. Okay. Sure. Once you take on the responsibility of safety for another person, you take on a responsibility of making sure that you do what's necessary, even if it's inconvenient, even if it's not in your best interest. And if that isn't something that you feel capable of doing, then you should never step into that position. And it's unfortunate, I feel, that uh, Ms. Gutierrez's experience level on this film may not have um, 
worked in her favor. It was the best thing I could probably say there. However, she took the position, and therefore these people on the movie set depended on her guidance and her professionalism to keep anyone from being harmed. And convenience isn't an option at that point. Okay. Um, 